And we're back, Jonathan. Another episode of the Road to Code. Wow, just just these episodes just keep going and going, huh? Yeah, it's just nonstop. Nonstop. That's I right. lost track. I lost track of how many we're doing already. Wow, I know. Me too. Like, where are we? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna keep on pumping them out. So cool. All right. Well, let's uh, jump into some uh, some uh, merch. What do you got for merch? We have some merch available. Hmm. Yes, we have women's t-shirts, men's t-shirts, and also mugs. But the tote bags are going to go away. They're going away. Oh, they're not going to provide them anymore, are they? That's going to be it. Darn it. But, so uh, you could just go onto our website and buy, purchase one of these or... Where's if, our website? Our website. Oh, no. Oops. What's the URL? The URL is theroadtocode.net. And we have a merch tab right here. So you just click on the official merch. It'll take you right to... The place where you can get the merch. Yeah. But Jonathan, we're poor. Mm -hmm. Probably most of our listeners are poor, just like us, you know, or wait, is it poor or broke? Which one is it? It's broke. Broke. Yeah. (laughs) We're broke. So if we can't afford this merchandise, how do we get free merchandise? All you have to do is enter our giveaway we're having once a month at the end of the month every last sunday of the month every last sunday of the month got it and we're giving away free merch so all all you have to do is subscribe if you're not already and comment on any one of our videos so you can subscribe if you haven't if you are subscribed to our youtube channel which is where do we go for the youtube channel it's on uh, Growing Up John. So it's youtube.com forward wow. slash Growing Up J-O-N. Yeah. And this is my channel right here. All of the Road to Code con- content. All right. So if you're already subscribed, uh, just comment on any video. But what if we have nothing to say, Jonathan? All you have to do is write, show me the merch. Wait a second. So you're saying that they would just say, show me the merch and that's it? They got it? Whoa, whoa. What happened? Yes. What? Got it. We have merch. We got merch. <laughs> <laughs> this is simple. That's all we got to do. That's all subscribe. you got to do. If you already subscribed, so, uh, put something in the comments on any of our videos. That says, show me the merch and you'll be like us. Yeah. Rocking the Road to Code merch. That's right. Let me go ahead and finish up drinking my water here. (laughs) Sounds pretty easy to me, Jonathan. Yeah. We should have a ton of people joining us, huh? With uh, with this merch. Rocking all the Road to Code merch. So, Jonathan... In our last episode, we left off where you were taking a challenge. Yeah. Do you remember what that challenge was? The challenge was creating or adding the history aspect of the um, the web API. The what? Significant events. Yeah. We we're working on the significant events. So you were, you were actually getting the, the tables done, the store procedures, and then you started working on the data access components. Mm-hmm. And I was very impressed with what you had going on there. Very clean looking code. It looked pretty good. I was like, wow, I go, this looks like a, like a, like a veteran code, uh, <laughs> veteran style code here. So what um what have you been doing and where are you at with that now um so i'm still actually working on it um there was 
couple of hiccups that I went through uh, through life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I couldn't really get to it. Yeah. Life always gets in the way, huh? Yes, it does. Man. So where, where do we, did, did, did we get any progress or is it something um, we should revisit next time? We can revisit it next time. Definitely. Uh, any help that you need? Um, no, not at the moment. I You're feel kidding. like, I feel yeah. like I can figure it out myself. Yeah. All right. I like that. I like that. Very cool. Well, we did, um, we did have a work in progress for our goon talks application so if you want to share your your screen and um let's get into displaying some information all right and what we did is we created an array and that array is being displayed on the screen and so what we need to do is we need to start pushing this array back into an api so that we can start working with an API to, um, to be able to display this information. And so I think you remember last time we set up two different projects, right? We have a project where we have a create React app application that runs on its own. And then we have a second application, which is a solution and that solution runs the API, and then you launch both of them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then we had to set up the, the whole, what do you call it? Um, the cross, the, the course rules, you know, the cross origin resource sharing, mm -hmm. so that the React application can access the API. Remember that whole debacle? Yeah. Trying to get that to work. Yeah. You know, I looked at that and I was like, there has to be a better way for us to do this. And I found a better way for us to do this. All right. You still need cores if you're going to run separate applications. But if you want them to be in the same application, it's actually really easy. So what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of a, um, a little bit of file movement so that we can we can set up the solution so that we're just running one solution that runs both the API and the React app in one. So go ahead and close Visual Studio Code and let's open up the Windows File Explorer. And um, let's go ahead and open up two of these. So if you do um, Windows, the Windows key E will okay. open up a, a second one. Yeah. And let's go ahead and put them side by side. So if you just slam it, there you go. And then on the left side, go ahead and go to the C drive. And I believe that it's under repos, right? So go into repos and then it's Guntox. Yeah. So this is cool. We'll go ahead and leave that window the way it is. And over on the right, let's go ahead and go to the C drive. And let's go ahead and go into the repos. And let's go ahead and click into Guntox. And let's cut contacts. Oh, you know what? Wait a second. This might work, actually. I think we could leave that the way it is. Let's go ahead and go into, no, no, go ahead and stay there. Because we're going to do a little bit of file movement, but we're going to do it after um, we set up the solution. So let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio 2019. And let's go ahead and create a new project. And we're going to set up an empty solution. So a blank solution. And let's call it Guntox. Uh, make sure that you select the right folder. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead and create that. Okay. Let's go ahead and close Visual Studio and we'll move some files around. Okay. 
So you see how you got that Guntox folder? So yeah. let's go into that Guntox folder and move that solution over to the left window so that it puts it right on the root of the first Guntox. And then go ahead and go up one folder on the right and get rid of the Guntox folder. Perfect. Okay. Now, this one here. Oh, this is going to work perfect. Okay, let's go back. Go, you could just go ahead and double click on Guntalk Solution. It'll open up Visual Studio 2019. And now we're going to add a project. So go ahead and right click on it and add a new project. And what we're going to look for is you see how it's C sharp windows and then where it says desktop go down to web and then scroll down to where you see react i think you went too far there you go asp.net with react okay so go ahead and click on that. And let's call it Guntox.webapp. You can go ahead and make that a W, a capital W and a capital A. And let's go ahead and click on next. 5.0, no authentication. We're good with that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and right click on the solution and let's do a clean. Let's make sure that this is gonna work for us. And then once it's done with the clean, go ahead and rebuild. I think your Visual Studio is going off the screen. You can go ahead and click on the Maximize button. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Now we can see everything. Now we're cooking with fire. <laughs> <laughs> and um, once it's done building, yeah, this is actually going out and doing the, the yarn no, the, the NPM install. So it's installing all the package, all the packages. And then it's going through and running the build and the whole thing. And now we should be able to run on IIS Express. So go ahead and click on IIS Express up on top center. You see where it says IIS? There you go. Click on that puppy there. Here it is. So this is running an out of the box um, React web application that is running a web API in the background, okay? Let's go ahead and click on a counter. This counter is a simple React page. That's just, if you click on increment, it's just keeping track of a counter and it <laughs> just increments it. And if you go to fetch data, fetch data is actually going to the web API and grabbing this data from the web API. So everything is running under one application, okay? And I'll show you how all this is working really quick. Go ahead and close down this tab and this Chrome window. And let's go to the folder that says client app. The client app is the create react app. So everything that you have in the contacts folder, we're gonna be moving it over to the client app. Now, there's a couple of things that are different. If you go to package.json, go ahead and double click on that one. Package.json. Yeah, go ahead and double click on that. 
you'll notice that create uh, React is 16.0. Go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code and look at your uh, package.json. So is 17. 17. So out of the box, they're a whole major version behind. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to copy these this content into that folder so that we can run this application when we launch Visual Studio.net under IIS Express. So in order to do that, we need to close both Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio uh, 2019. And over on the right-hand side, double-click in the guntax.web app folder and go into the client app. And let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and click in on the left side, click in the contacts. <laughs> let's go ahead and delete everything on the right hand except for the .emv file. We'll give that a couple seconds to clean itself up. You go ahead and uh, Oh, what's, um, I don't know what's holding it back. Go ahead and do, oh, I can't delete the module. That's fine. You can go ahead and skip that. Source? Yeah, go ahead and skip it. We'll, we'll get rid of them right now. Okay, and then get rid of the rest of the stuff there. And copy everything from your folder on the left and drag it on over to the right. And then go ahead and go on your left-hand side, go up one folder and get rid of the contacts folder. All right, now we just cross our fingers and pray that it works. <laughs> yeah, that seems like, <laughs> Does it, will it work? <laughs> We're about to find out. All right. Guntalk solution cannot be open. Do you want to remove the reference? Say no. Oh, because we want to go ahead and say yes. And go ahead and reopen that Guntalks again. It was in the wrong folder. Hmm. And let's go ahead and do a solution clean. And then once the clean succeeds, let's go ahead and do a rebuild. This is supposed to be plug and pray type of work. <laughs> plug it in and pray that it works. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. Let's pr uh, press play on the IS Express and see if it works. If it works, we're going to give Microsoft a round of applause. <laughs> it's taking a little while. It's a good sign. Yeah, it's doing something. It's definitely doing something. Wow. Oh. Hey, there it is. Wow. It worked. Congratulations, Microsoft. You did something <laughs> right. That's Actually, so Microsoft does a lot of good things right. Wow, I did not think that was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it wasn't going to work. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. <laughs> Does it work if you go to create? Yep. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> we can do a couple of things here, okay? Um, one of them is that we can actually work in Visual Studio. 
it's it's possible to work with um, JS files in Visual Studio, um, or we can open up, we can have Visual Studio and we can also have uh, Visual Studio code running. The live build is constantly working for React. So if you update React files, uh, it's gonna update automatically. But if we do anything with the API, then we have to switch over. We have to stop the solution and then relaunch it again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm up for either one. I mean, if you want to try just Visual Studio, you want to give that a shot for a little bit? Let's do it. You see what we get. So let's go ahead and stop it. And uh, so we can modify the files. We'll just, uh, you hit the stop button over to your right. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, so I think the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and shrink that file real estate a little bit. We don't need that much room. And then if you expand controllers, let's go ahead and right click under controllers. Oops. And we're gonna add a new controller. And we're going to make it, um, so if you, over on your left, you see where it says API, click on API. And you're going to open up a new empty. Yep. And what are we calling this? This is for um, contacts, right? So let's call it, let's call it um, contact controller. So this is by naming convention, right? We have to call it controller. We can call it whatever we want in the beginning, but it has to have the controller keyword in there because it's working with convention. It's not working with any type of configuration. So it's actually looking for the controller keyword in there, okay? And you'll notice that our route is going to be API controller, all right? So let's go ahead and right click anywhere on the blank and let's clean and sort our use, remove and sort usings. Nice. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and create a, um, a constructor. So after line eight, let's go ahead and create a constructor. I'm going to show you some shortcuts on this one. So it's going to be CTOR, CTOR, and then tab, tab. And then inside the parentheses on line nine, go ahead and type in I logger, capital I, capital L. And then open, close ankle brackets. The ankle brackets, the um, angle brackets greater than less than yeah and then inside the angle brackets you're going to go ahead and put contact controller yeah and then outside the angle bracket you're going to go ahead and just call it logger lowercase logger cool and then go ahead and right click oh so hover over the i logger let's fix that error first and let's go look at the um, potential fixes using Microsoft extension logging. Yep, perfect. And let's hover over the iLogger, right click on it. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the logger, the lowercase logger. And does this give you, oh, this doesn't do that. Okay, let's do it a different way. Let's go ahead and get go to the end of logger and do control period. Yeah, so create and assign a field down the left. Yeah, that one right there, there you go. So that, you saw how that created a property inside the class mm -hmm. and it automatically assigns it within the controller. Now, because the parameter 
logger is the same name as the property logger, it differentiated it by adding this. This dot means that this class or this object has a member called logger, and we're going to go ahead and assign the parameter logger value to it. Mm -hmm. Now, we can change it so that it automatically uses an underscore, and it won't use this. We can go ahead. I, I would say leave it. It's kind of, you know, it very inferring, saying, hey, this is different from the parameter, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think we should leave it. I, I think that's a good one. The other thing that we want to add is we want to add, um, do we need to add configuration? I don't think we need to add configuration. I think right now we just need the logger, okay? After line 10, let's go ahead and let's get a couple of blank lines. Test this out by saving everything, first of all. And let's go ahead and run it. So let's go to a new tab. And um, let's go ahead and, and go to the address and do localhost. What's, what's the number on there? 44325. Okay, let's go ahead and copy that. And then, oh, no, that I didn't want to do that. Go ahead and do forward slash API, uh, lowercase, it's all lowercase. And then forward slash contacts, because this is the contact, contact contact controller remember we leave out the controller part but the contact yeah no leave out the controller we don't need that because remember it's working on convention yeah so it already knows that it's a controller we just need to give it the first part so go ahead and press enter and it gave us the array mm -hmm. now there's a plugin that you can add to chrome so open up a third tab and let's um Look for JSON plugin. Whoops. There you go, the first one. JSON viewer. Go ahead and add this extension to your Chrome. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and close this window, this tab, and refresh this. Yeah. Look at that. Looks pretty to me. Yep. So this is the array that we need to go and grab using Axios. We need to go and grab this array um, and display it on our homepage. So let's go ahead and stop this. Go ahead and close these, these two tabs. And in your list.js, Yeah, in here, we need to add, um, we're going to need to add Axios. So why don't you go ahead and open up a command line, head over to that client app folder and add Axios. Okay. Um, how do I do the terminal? Let's open up the uh, the tools on Chrome so that we can see the error in case there's any and open up the console. Hey. There you go, look at that. <laughs> that worked out pretty well. Yeah. And we're getting it from the API this time, you yeah? <laughs> know? That's kind of cool. <clears throat> It's kind of a, it's, it's a little ways of, of including everything in one application so that all you got to do is just press one button, 
fires up your Create React app, and it also fires up your API. You don't have to deal with any cores issues, you know, with cross origin resource sharing. You just say, hey, this is all part of the same website, you know, and it goes ahead and just shares the resources all together. And so I think this is a good place to stop, Jonathan. Yeah. I mean, we, we got it, it working. We got the application all in one. We were able to push the array up into the API next week. We'll go ahead and start digging into the repository, the data access, and we'll create the table with uh, the tables. We're going to create an address book, which requires multiple tables, Jonathan. All right. This is, uh, this is huge. This <laughs> is huge, you know, and then we'll be able to, uh, to start putting in all different types of information in there. And so this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be more, a little bit more elaborate than, than what we got. Let's do one final test. Let's make sure that your menu still works when you go to your, to your contacts or yeah, to create. Okay. So the placeholder works. All right, cool. That works. You can go ahead and collapse that menu. I'm um, pretty happy with this right now. Yeah. It's pretty good. All of our plug and praying worked. All our praying did work when we plugged it in. That's right. Yeah. The, the demo gods were with us. <laughs> For those of you who believe in that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, close this window and commit all of our changes into Git. Let's put a comment in there. We got a working single application. And um, initiating push. Well, well, go ahead and hit that up arrow. Please. And let's go make sure that everything is in Git. So I'm going to go ahead and take a, a cruise on, over to Git. And let's go to Goontox. There it is. Wow. The web app is in there. The solution is in there. Mm -hmm. This is actually looking pretty good. So if anybody would like to download this project and play around with it they're more than than um it, it is public right yeah it's yeah public. yeah they can clone it and they can play around with it uh this is definitely a great start of an application that gives you something a a single place where you can go and and create um an application that runs both your api and your and your react app all in one so this is kind of cool now, yeah. we, you know, we played around with the file system, which is okay. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. We could do it from scratch, but why reinvent the wheel, right, Jonathan? Mm -hmm. So, cool. Any final thoughts? Um, yeah, let's uh, wait for next week for more Road to Code. That's right. Until next time. Peace, Peace. out.